things have been progressing rather nicely with the uh, hacked telephones and I've come up with a good idea to build bespoke booths. So this is a 70s booth. I also have my payphone booth as well. So I have this nice way of incorporating different takes on a similar theme um, through building these different themed uh, booths. Maybe I could have 70s, 80s and 90s. But it soon became apparent that they're going to take a lot of wood. They look really good. They take a long time to build, but um, they do take a lot of wood. So I'm thinking of maybe making something modular. So it's a one cabinet that could be a film, uh, phone, uh, but also incorporate other projects like my little fortune teller, perhaps. So this is a little coin operated, very small coin operated fortune teller, a bit like Zoltar from the film Big. It's where I got my inspiration from. So you put your coin in, it blinks a few times. The actual eyes are from an old Furby, by the way. And it gives you a prediction like an eight ball would. Um, so I started building something or came up with an idea that we could have the bottom half of the cabinet coin operated. And then, and then the top half, we can just switch in and out depending on who wants what and when. So we could have like a phone box half, a 70s phone box as well and then uh, another module could slot in for the fortune teller and the lower half will remain the same controlling all the collection of money for charity um, so I'm left with this problem how do we get my little fortune telling uh, toy uh, that I made earlier this year into something as big as what you're seeing now in the form of a cabinet well the first things first we have to get the things out so I have to break a project and I hate doing this I really don't like doing it so you take it all out test it make sure it all works and uh, a friend of mine gave me this nice little 1d coin uh, slot plate um, which I want to incorporate so I'm trying to fit the coin mechanism to that which is basically just like a little micro switch that connects up to the micro bit actually the code for the micro bit is really simple, really, really simple. And as you can see here, it's pin zero for the coin. So the micro switch that's triggered by the insertion of the coin um, triggers pin zero, which then everything cascades from there. So uh, pin one sends a message out to the Furby eyes to start blinking. Uh, and that's on a, 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 a two cycle. So it does one. Uh, for a random amount of time and a second one for another random amount of time before then working the servo motor which um, makes the arrow spin round to uh, as you can see from a random amount of degrees so we don't know what decision we're getting when we put our money in we can get a yes a no or an unclear one of the three and we don't know which one we're getting because it's all random which is brilliant so let's start putting it all together then. We've got the electronics working, we've got the code working, let's start putting it in. And it actually required a lot of drilling, believe it or not, just for that little coin slot and a lot of hot glue. There is a ton of hot glue behind the scenes, all holding it together. I love hot glue, um, mainly because if you make a mistake, it's easy to peel off and start again. And if you were sort of um, soldering in something or permanently gluing in something, so it's brilliant. So we glue everything in. Here's me gluing the servo motor in. And um, the next thing is to make sure it's all um, strong enough to hold the contents of the fortune telling toy. And here we are, we have it all laid out on top. Put the coin in, fingers crossed it works. And yeah, it's working away nicely. The great thing about working with a bigger cabinet is you've got loads of room underneath just to stick stuff out the way so you can't see it. Obviously, I don't have a point or an arrow yet, so I've just made two with hot glue and a pencil. Um, but you get the idea. It works, and it works really well. I think the proportions, the head's probably a little bit too small for the cabinet, but it looks all right. Where do we go from here? That's a very good question. I would like to start building the body. Okay, we've got the basics nailed. We've got the basics down to a T. It's working really nicely, but. I want to start making the body. So I'm on the hunt for some mannequin parts, possibly. I might even just stuff some kid's uh, top, <laughs> like, a, like a jacket or something, like, like you would do with uh, on Guy Fawkes Night, making a guy for the bonfire, that sort of thing. Also need a crystal ball or something. And I want to get it quite close 
very, very similar, as close as I can to what you see in like the, the big film. Because I want this to be a Zoltar machine. And I'd like it to maybe talk as well. And I've got some nice LED strip lighting, which will um, really add add to the effect that I'm trying to achieve here. So yeah, that's my fortune telling machine at the minute. Um, I want to finish the fortune telling machine before um, I show off the uh, the payphone uh, modules as well. So we have, like I said, we have the bottom half that handles all the money side of things. And we have the top half, which we can switch out depending on who wants what. And I'm very pleased to say that the payphone has had its first booking for this summer. So this is when I intend to launch everything this summer. And there you go. Take care. Bye bye.